Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. We're so excited to have you again. Dr. Obadaya Mailafia, the former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, has once again been invited to appear before the DSAs. Don't forget that some um, weeks ago he was invited by the police to appear so that he can give a proper statement about uh, his allegation of uh, a northern governor sponsoring Boko Haram, but he declined based on the directive of his lawyers and decided to go to high court to prevent uh, being investigated by the police. We are here to have full feedback about that, but just now he has been reinvited to DSS and uh, he's saying something that draws a Nigerian's attention and most people have reacted to what he has to say this is the time that he has been invited. All right, and the news have it that, that Obadaya Mailafia has been invited once again by the Department of State Services. The nation quoted him as saying that the DSS asked him to come to its head office in Joss on Monday. This is the third time the security agency is inviting my Lafia since he alleged that a northern governor is among the leaders of the Boko Haram insurgency group. I have once again for the third time been ordered to appear before the DSS at the Adjust headquarters this coming Monday, 14 September at 11 o'clock at 11 a.m. He was quoted as saying, he also alleged that his life is in danger, saying he spoke on behalf of the martyrs killing matter killings in the country over the years. I spent over 20 years of my working life abroad as a university teacher, banker, and international civil servant with unblemished record, he reportedly said. I have no criminal record, not even a parking ticket. Sadly, it is in my own fatherland that I am being subjected to criminal investigation and such extreme political persecution. Please pray for me. I have reasons to believe that my life is in danger and that some powerful political forces want to silence me forever for speaking the truth, for speaking on behalf of the holy martyrs of thousands of innocent children, women, elderly, and, young, and youths that have been killed in our beloved country. Speaking during the program on Nigeria Info 95.1 FM, Abuja on August 10, precisely, Malafia said repentant insurgent informed him that a governor from the north was their commander. They told us that one of the northern governors is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram and the bandits are one and the same. They have sophisticated network, he said. He claimed the claim caused a stir among Nigerians while the Northern Governors Forum asked the security agency to investigate it. When he was first invited by the DSAs, the security agency said that the allegation was fake news, but Mailafia stood his ground. He has also said he was ready to lay down his life for Nigeria, like Nelson Mandela, former president of South Africa, did for his country. This is not the time to disown what I said. Yes, I was privy to some very sensitive information which all statements are, statement are entitled to have by virtue of our public rules, he said. I know that I should have taken more care to collaborate some of the information I received, but perhaps some of it was uncollaborated and I was in no position to follow them to the camp to collaborate what was going on. But I am not sensationalist. I am an economist and a central banker. By nature, we are not given to sensation. Let me make it clear. I am a humanist. I am a man of peace. I love Nigeria like Mandela. Let me say, if need be, I am prepared to give my life for Nigeria. My Lafia had also gone to court to seek a restraining order against the police who he said are also pursuing him so that's the, the issue is get, getting right now very serious and nigerians have gone to the social media to respond about the statement that my lafia made you know some time ago which uh, for many people it's really indicting in a country like this and 
considering the nature of the issue on ground, it's totally wrong for one to just come and say things without valid evidence. Because the truth of the matter is, if you're coming out to say anything in Nigeria, you need to present valid evidence. We all know, we all know that there's something about this Boko Haram issue, but no one can really bring out an evidence to prove that possibly is caused by this one, is caused by this one. But Nigerians are like, why should it linger for this long? Why is it that all effort towards fixing this issue is proving abortive? Why is it that our military is failing? But nobody have evidence anywhere. So for you to come out a sensitive issue of this nature, you come out to the plane and inform Nigerians that you have an intel that has something to do with the person who is leading this group. When you know that this group has uh, carried out a lot of horrible acts in the country, and you feel nobody will pursue you so that you open up every secret, then you are lying. So it's a big one for him right now, and that's why he's soliciting for Nigerians to pray for him because he's facing a very troubling moment right now. But let's first of all, let's look at what Nigerians have to say. This one says, when you spit a lie against a northern governor that you said is behind Boko Haram and fail to prove your point, instead you went apologizing that you got your intels from the market. It didn't come to your head that it will come with consequences, right? Reap what you sow, oh God. Mm. You can see some people, they are hitting him real hard. And this one says, is this not the same man that apologized that he lied about his sources? You see there? You need to have balls before you come out to speak out the way you did. Another person here said, you said a current governor is a leader of Boko Haram and told us to take it seriously. The security agency did, did by inviting you to expand shit so that such governor can be stopped. It turned out you lied to spread rumor which prompted an investigation into your motive. See your life? Hmm. This one say, make Nigerians way never chop once a day. Pray for you. Join all the billions way you don't thief for your generation on Bonabi. I'm not sure he stole any money, my brother. Let's not accuse him for what he did not do. And another person here say, if you need someone to help you, you need to, first of all, tell Nigerians the entire truth. Another one says here, truth always have a way of leaving you to stand alone. To even make matters worse, the same people who will feel the real effect are here blasting him. You think he don't have the resources to flee to exile if he could? Slaves really don't know they are slaves, even when you tell them. Well, wow. and this one say, I'm disappointed in you, sir. At this age, what is there to lose? Call out their names. We will die once. Yes, they will deny it with DSS and police, but this will go a long way. But come, that is just it. Then for you to come and be fidgeting and seeking for sympathy. When you said it, didn't you know that it's going to be a tough one for you? You don't spread that those kind of, those are very sensitive issues. Uh, I know as much as we respect the fact that he had to speak about the issue, but you don't lie. You can talk about the consequences of the uh, uh, Boko Haram influence in the society. But if you don't have anything to say, my brother, it's totally wrong. Because whether you like it or not, there is no government in this country that will not chase or government in any country of the world that will not chase you. Remember the time that these guys were really attacking U.S. Uh, terrorists and all of that. And all of a sudden you say, I know where Saddam Hussein is. A public office holder, you come out to say such a thing. He is being sponsored by one governor of a particular state in United States. If you say that everybody will clamp down on you, they will want to know, take us to where this man is. You know? So it's as grievous as that. You don't come around in the public and say that kind of thing. It's not a joke. Look at the northerners, how those guys are suffering. Look at what they are passing through. 
They are dying. Some of them can't even have access to their own little work that they have been doing, farming and all of that. Whose course are dying on a daily basis. Things are happening in Southern Kaduna. We are seeing a lot of happen in Plateau, in Katsina. Everywhere, there's no particular place that is exempted. You understand? So if, if you have any intels about that particular thing, you shouldn't joke about it, brother. If you don't have, shut your mouth up. Don't, because you can cause a lot of wahala around town. And you're sitting comfortably. Unfortunately, he has to face what he has to face. Yeah, because he must speak out. And possibly these guys may likely use him as an example. So that next time, nobody will do. I'm not supporting the fact that he's been invited and all of that. But what he did was wrong. Let's call it spade a spade. What he did was absolutely wrong for him to say what he said. It was wrong. And after saying, it wasn't wrong when he said it. But when you were called upon and you now say, actually, I got my intels from the market. Uh -huh. Everybody can get intels from the market. But he was saying it as if he has even been to the Akam. He has spoken to the leaders of Boko Haram. This is what they have come up with. This is who they have mentioned. He spoke as if that was what was in his palms. You know, don't just talk anyhow. Being a man of that caliber. And knowing that Nigerians will respect every statement that proceeds out of your mouth, what were you expecting? That the government will leave you to obey and just allow you? It, it's you know it's it's really wrong. Let's let's be so truthful to ourselves. And uh, this one says, name them so we can hold them responsible. Should anything happen to them, to to you, why give a half? begged information call out their names cause we want to know the enemies of the state and if you don't have evidence and proof keep silence please simple that's just it that is it this one is not somebody you can't say the government is after me or the government you call you are the one that calls because this is we want to know who told you oh god tell us who told you if you don't provide the person then for causing confusion about a sensitive issue like this then you're going to face something that you least expected i'm very sorry for him this one said the only way to bring real change to nigeria is to continue to speak truth to power to end all these then the issues to end all these issues the whole system is rotten from head to bottom and instead of cutting the head off we instead be on top of the rubbish for 50 plus years i can see collapse already and some people are praying for him this one says you are not a lone doctor my lafia the divine got your back just keep doing the right thing by standing with the truth without fear or worry even in the face of evil great men of valor stand by their convictions come rain come shine some people are praying for him. this one say no weapon fashion against you shall prosper nigerians are away when erufai said he paid some group to stop killing in kaduna who are those behind the group? Why are they paid instead of arrest? That nobody knows. And I want here say, may God protect you, sir. Not many has the will and power to say the truth. Fear not those that can, they can destroy the body. They cannot destroy you. Another one here says, and if anyone knows the man, tell him to pick up a paper and pen, kia kia, and write everything he knows, names and evidence where possible see a solicitor and ensure the seal as a sworn testimony and to be released if he dies of anything other than natural cause back home. this one said this time where you use talk this nonsense you for you them talk the things make we hear make i never troll now you see then nobody is really giving him support you know you told us that you know these people and all of that but here you are here you are telling our stories. All right.